Of course. Yes. I was really excited. And I was telling people, despite COVID, it even exceeded my expectations of what the Olympics were going to be like. Of course, it was different with with no fans, but I definitely felt all the love and support from afar. And it was so special, just really hit home once I got to the Olympic athlete village, seeing, you know, countries from all around the world and all the various sports that just kind of hit home, like we're here at the Olympics, um, and just getting ready to compete and the same thing lining up on that start line with, you know, amazing women from all over the world. And even though no fans just being in that humongous stadium um, and taking it all in is really special. It was it was awesome, and I mean, I I was watching. I'm sure a lot of other people were watching too. Just kind of seeing you on TV and quite feeling that excitement, um, and it was great. So let's talk about the run. Uh, there was uh, it was an interesting run. You know, some things kind of went down there, but uh, you know, you you really worked hard to try to get to where you were. So t- tell me about that experience. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and it ended up being a very popular race in the Olympics because Safan Hassan, who was the reigning world champion um, in both the 15 and and 5 or 10K, I believe it was, um, she ended up going down, um, which made the headlines. Uh, but yeah, it was very um, crowded from the start, which is expected at that that level. I knew just because you have so many um, fast women competing for that spot in the next round. So, so I was prepared for that and just stayed calm and composed and within, you know, that kind of front lead pack there, just being able or being ready to act when the time came, um, kind of that last lap. And, and in doing so, I kind of got caught up as the pace was changing. And I'm sure a lot of you guys saw, I had one pretty big stumble there, but I was able to catch myself luckily, but it sent some other girls kind of flying, uh, behind me which which is all part of racing and in that last lap I tried to you know just stay composed focus go after chase those girls and um, when it came down to that last 200 meters I was still mentally in it and trying to give it everything I had but I just didn't have that final gear um, to stick with the woman to qualify for that next round but I left it all out there um no regrets how the race went and definitely just gained a lot of experience to um my first time i guess competing in track at, on that international stage so it was a great experience and to run against yeah all those amazing women and just learn from that experience too what was going through your mind tell you when when you hit that snag you know i, I think everybody's curious where was your i mean you have to be ultra focused right like you can't let something like that pull you back but there must be a split second there where you're like, oh my gosh. Oh, definitely. I think my first, I mean, you kind of freak out in the moment when it's happening, right? And I think through my mind was don't fall, don't fall, like keep your balance, which I was happy I did. And then and then from there, you just have to quickly refocus. And I was just telling myself, you know, okay, a little stumble doesn't impact the race. Like just stay focused. It's not over yet. So just bringing myself mentally back into it quickly and, you know, being competitive and just going after it that last lap well and the the announcer that was on cbc was saying you were doing all the right things you were staying with the pack you were staying on the inside you know really kind of going with that group and i I guess the thought was to try to break yourself out of that at the end you know um to to do that so it seems like you were doing all the right things just you know the way that it works sometimes right like like you said so many people are crowded together uh, of course a- yeah it's tactics and I guess before leading up to that point because I found myself in the pack on the inside rail there and I did try and make because I saw a little opening that I tried to make a little surge to get by um to start accelerating that lap but but that gap did not open and you know oh. you can't you can't shove an elbow through those um through those little cracks so I had to just kind of remain calm but then yeah the pace change and you know, trip up happens, trips up, trip ups happen in races like that. We saw yeah. them in, in various events at the Olympics. Um, definitely see it more on the, on the world stage at championship events, just because you have so many, you know, fast athletes who are, yeah, super keen competitive there. So what's next, Natalia? You're back home now, obviously taking a little break for a bit, but uh, what can we expect in terms of competitions in the near future here? Yes, yeah, so I decided to come back to Spokane, um, my U.S. kind of base at my fiance's parents' house for a few more days because I'm going to head to Memphis this weekend in Tennessee for one more crack at the 1500. 
um, figure I'm fit right now and I may as well uh, take a crack at getting the qualifying standard for world championships next season. So mm -hmm. I'll be aiming to get that standard this weekend. And after that, I'll call it a season and take some, some downtime, a few weeks, enjoy some different activities, and then get back in some base training and just um, training leading up to those world champs to um, try and get myself a spot on the team.